Hey there guys, it's me the Dom Fanatic and welcome to week 7 of the Pokemon Premier League. This week we are up against Ruby Marrow, uh, you might know him as Travis, and he is the manager of the Cleveland Bros. Um, he's doing pretty well this season, I think he's actually fallen to 4th place recently. Um, lots of very close games so far this season for everyone, meaning that the top of the table and the bottom of the table is pretty much just flipping. Uh, everyone could finish like anywhere still at this point, or most people anyway. Um, so it's still very close sort of season for everyone, but um, Ruby did start the season off very well. He has started to slip up a bit, um, which is good for me going into the game. But uh, matchup wise, I feel like his team just completely takes a massive poop on mine. So um, not really going into this game with the best sort of mindset, you know, thinking like, oh, you know, I'm, I have got a really good chance of winning. So I'm like, okay, I've got to really, really play around his team quite well. And, you know, uh, bear in mind, uh, the Johns are coming out here. I had just been... Uh, at a Smash tournament uh, on, on small sleep or a low amount of sleep all weekend and I had been uh, traveling back for about three hours uh, just before I played oh and I played football for about an hour and a half before this game as well um, on low sleep so I wasn't in the best sort of physical state of playing this but I can't use that as an excuse um, for whatever the outcome of this game so uh, quickly go over uh, well I, I didn't even need to go over Ruby's team really as you can see it's quite clearly a rain team um, I, I don't really have anything for Kindra. Uh, I mean, I have a Gastrodon, but if that Kindra has Hidden Power Grass, I nope, I have nothing. Um, he has got Mamoswine, which uh, again, I, I don't have much. My my levitating Pokemon is Togekiss, but oh wait, I'm I'm weak to to Ice, so yeah. Um, and offensive Scolipede, uh, if it gets one Sword Stance up, I literally have nothing for it apart from um, Kebia Berry Togekiss, um, which I do have. I'll go over my team very briefly. I have got Sugar Berry Infernape. Um, Sugarberry is on there, not for the Mamoswine, it's on there for the Scolipede, in case the Scolipede didn't get up to plus two. Uh, I could live an Earthquake, hit it with Fire Punch, uh, and either kill it, or if it was Sash, kill it with Mac Punch. Next, uh, oh, and I'm also Adamant Nature. Uh, this and Kartana, um, I could both run Adamant this week, which was funny, because, uh, his speed tiers are so all over the place. Meaning that, obviously, if he brings a Scarfer on his two faster mons, they're gonna outspeed my max speed Kartana anyway. But then he hasn't got anything that can be Scarfed and outspeed Adamant Kartana with a certain amount of her investment, so... That was quite good, but yeah, I've got Adamant Scarfed Kartana, uh, with pretty much Leaf Blade, is the only attack I want this game. Plan was to get rid of Ferrothorn and, um, the Scolipede, which I can do with Kartana, because I've got Psychic Cut and Sacred Sword, respectively. Um, but I'll have to weaken or kill them both first before Kartana can do anything. Uh, next up, I've got three attacks, Roost, uh defensive Togekiss. I mainly bought this because he has got Sableye and I haven't really got much else for it. Uh, Steelix is the fourth Mon. Uh, it takes on Tapu Koko incredibly well uh, unless he's got Hidden Power Ground or something because he wouldn't bring Hidden Power Fire because he does have the rain. Uh, I think it's Earthquake, Roar, uh, Heavy Slam and Stealth Rocks. Rocks were vitally important to part of uh, the Katana potential sweep if I could get that going. Uh, Necrozma is uh, a cool set this week. Um, it's uh, Defensive with a little bit of special attack investment, max HP, Calm Mind, Substitute, Dark Pulse, Psychic. I had to bring Dark Pulse, otherwise Sable I walled me. Um, and finally Gastrodon was there to be basically my hopeful answer to Kingdra. Um, it could do something to uh, Pelipper, potentially. So uh, yeah, that was kind of there to be a special wall. But we get straight into the game now. We do lead off with the Infernape, because uh, I can U-turn on most things. However, he leads with the Scolipede. And like I said in uh, just a minute ago in the team preview screen, I do have the Sugarberry, so I have no fear in staying in. Uh, and he actually has Toxic Spikes, which is um, good because it kind of reveals, well, he's not going to be able to do anything with the Scolipede anymore. Because um, I get the Fire Punch, he does go down to his Sash, but I will click Mac Punch this turn because I don't want him to get another layer up. If he wants to, I mean, he hasn't really got a switch into Infernape, um, other than Tapu Koko. He could have easily switched into Tapu Koko here, which would have been uh, a pain, but do go for the Mac Punch. He was obviously staying in, going for a second layer of spi uh, Toxic Spikes, sorry, but. That isn't going to come off for him. And we get the early 6-5 lead. And like I said in the pre-game, um, Scolipede and Ferroform were the only things stopping my Kartana from sweeping. And lo and behold, first one of them two is gone. So I'm really in a good mood here. So in comes the Pelipper. I'm thinking he could be Scarfed. Um, but I'm going to stay and click Thunder Punch because Infernape's pretty much done its job. Yes, there's Ferroform in the back still, but uh, there might be other ways I can deal with it. Um, I go for Thunder Punch here, which I reveal, which... Um, it doesn't really matter in the long run, but I uh, kind of reveal that Pelipper can't really stay in on this thing. Uh, but I'm sure he was expecting me to bring Thunder Punch on this anyway. Um, so I'm going to click Fire Punch here because I'm thinking there's not really much this, this Ferroform can do to me. And Fire Punch, um, it's just Iron Fist boosted. I am adamant, so two uh, Fire Punches is still enough to kill this thing in the rain, which is nice to know. 
However, if I had Flare Blitz, the outcome of this game could have been a little bit different, as you'll see shortly. Um, however, I didn't want to bring Flare Blitz because I didn't want the recoil, ideally. Um, just so I could take an Earthquake as best as I could from any potential setup Scolipede. So in comes the uh, Tapu Koko, absolutely terrifying Pokemon. I cannot wait to use this thing uh, myself at some point. Um, but I was never expecting the Ferrothorn to stay in there because it does take on a lot of my team quite well. He can definitely leech seed up on quite a few of my Mons. Um, so not expecting them to lose that anytime soon. Uh, I do make the safe switch into the Steelix. Um, I know this thing might have Nature's Madness, but it will die to an Earthquake. Uh, so I'm just going to set up my rocks, expecting him to switch out with a U-turn or hard switch. But he hard switches, so maybe revealing he doesn't have the U-turn. Uh, he could be fearing. Uh, he wouldn't even be fearing Rocky Helmet because I do. Uh, show I have the leftovers. Now I get my rocks up here. He might have gone into Pelipper expecting the uh, the Earthquake. I was never going to do that. I wanted rocks up because his only Defog I think is this Pelipper. Um, but considering he's got Toxic Spikes up, I'm not really thinking he'll want to click Defog if he has it. I'm um, going to go into Tokus, thinking it's it's like my best middle ground. I could have easily gone into um, gone into the the slug. I can't remember what it's called. Gastrodon, that's the one at this point. Um, just to maybe scout. Uh, do, we do here see that this Pelipper is faster. Um, so he's definitely speed invested. Whether he's offensive or not, I'm thinking he probably isn't because I am slightly specially defensive, but only a few EVs. Like I'm bold, I believe, with way more EVs than physical. So, um... Yeah, I do take that surf relatively well, and I can roost off more than the surf is doing. So he's actually going to switch here. Doesn't show any kind of ice beam. That <laughs> U-turn does absolutely nothing. Uh, and I'm going to get back up to full here. Now, I know that whenever Tokus is in, uh, it's a free switch in Tapu Koko. I'm pretty. I'm predicting at this point that he's going to expect me to get back into Steelix, because Steelix is a safe play. He can click Nature's Madness. If he's Life Orb, he'll take Life Orb damage from that. If he's not, we can, he, or he'll lock himself into it if he's choiced. Uh, if he's anything else, he, he still can't really do too much to Steelix. So I'm very much expecting to uh, expect me to switch out. But I'm actually going to stay in it, predicting the Nature's Madness, and I'm going to click the Dash and Gleam myself because uh, it's going to bring this Tapu Koko down way down to the red uh, zone of the HP bar. Um, and that really does limit his Tapu Koko. So I'm still up with six Pokemon. Admittedly, he has got his, uh, his Stealth Rocks and his. Um, his toxic spikes up but he has got no scolipede and tapu coco is dead on rock switching now i'm going to switch out into the steelix to take a u-turn uh, but yeah or a thunderbolt um, but he actually has volt switch i'm very confused why he actually bought volt switch in this thing um because i do have free uh electric communities so i would i'm i would have expected u-turn a bit more on this thing um, but he does go for the Nature's Madness on Steelix this time. I'm fine with that because Steelix was pretty much here to deal with the Tapu Koko. Here was a misplay. This actually comes to bite me a bit uh, later on in the game. I do click Raw, which means he still has got that Tapu Koko as, um, as fodder. I expect him to switch out to save it as fodder anyway. Um, but I could have clicked the Earthquake because he had a pretty free switch into Pelipper at this point. Set the rain up again, but I end up roaring out uh, him out into his Kingdra, which is uh, it's it's not good. So I'm going to switch out into my Togekiss and pretty much sack this thing off at this point. He could have clicked the Dragon Move, predicting me to switch out into the uh, Gastrodon, which I thought was quite obvious. But he actually clicked Surf, um, and you know uh, the Life Orb damage is nice. I do find out it's a Life Orb Kingdra. So, uh, you know, the more I can weaken this thing, the better. Now, looking at the Calcs, I obviously will outspeed this thing with Kartana at this point. Um, and I wasn't sure if I could kill. I think it turns out I could. Uh, I think at the time I was calcing it incorrectly. Um, but in comes Fidel Gastro anyway. Just wanted to see if this thing can actually hit me. He does switch out, um, which gives him a free switch into uh, the Ferroform. Now, these next couple of plays are pretty much game changing. Um, it's going to swing it one way or not for either. I mean, Ferroform is a safe switch in here. I should have really predicted that and gone into my Infernape because uh, it's a grass here. Well, obviously, it's something that's a grass type attack. Um, and it's not gonna, I can't do anything to it basically, Earth Power's the best I have for it, so I'm gonna switch out into Kartana here, expecting the Leech Seed or the Power Whip, and either Leech Seed won't affect me, or Power Whip will do no damage. Uh, Leech Seed would seem like a good play, because obviously I'm not gonna stay in with, uh, Gastrodon. So, um, here I click Sacred Sword, and I see the Berry Pop, and as soon as I see the Berry Pop, I'm like, oh no, this thing's gonna live it, he's gonna have Hidden Power Fire. And Kartana was literally my win condition. Um, yes, he has got the rain. Yes, he could have easily sort of outsped my Kartana. But at this point, before Kartana died, I still had five Pokemon. I could have stalled rain um, with Necrozma, potentially, or, you know, just taking some hits and hit that thing, that Kingdra back, because the more life orb it took, 
the better. Uh, and when rain runs out, I literally win um, with Kartana. Uh, I can easily kill the Pelipper. So I could have definitely played around if Kartana didn't die there. So that was huge. It pretty much forces in my Infernape to kill this thing. Um, I didn't have anything else on my team that could kill it at the range, I don't think. Um, so I had to bring Infernape in. In comes the Mammoth Swine. Um, it pretty much says it's Scarfed. Um, Mac Punch isn't going to kill. Uh, it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage because I am uh, Iron Fist, Adamant, Max Attack. It does way over 50%. Um, but he's going to go for the Earthquake. Reveals my Sugar Berry, so I'm not choiced in any way. You can tell that already because I switched up moves. I'm not a Z Crystal of any kind either. Um, but the Sugar was there for the uh, Scolipede. I'm going to go down to the Earthquake. And now Necrozma is literally my only way of winning, uh, if at all. But he has got that Toxic Spike up. If there was no Toxic Spikes, I would have felt a bit more confident about this. The Leftovers could have helped a lot um, with a future Calc. Um, but I'm going to get Poisoned. The only way of me really winning is if I can try and get set up. And this is where having no recovery and having Dark Pulse really bit me in the bum. I had to bring Dark Pulse. I feel like I justified, I'm justified in bringing Dark Pulse because I need something to hit the um, Sableye. I have to go for Calm Mind if I want to get some kills here. Uh, the Mammoth Swine uh, would have... I, well, he would have died to Psychic. I'm pretty confident of that. Um, but I need to set up Calm Minds to try and take some hits from the uh, Kingdra. Otherwise, I just lose. Um, because the combination of Mons that uh, Ruby has left can literally break down my two last defensive Pokemon. Um, so he does switch in the Pelipper here and set up the Rain, uh, which is exactly what I didn't want. But he does switch it out. Uh, obviously, the Stealth Rock's damage and the plus one Psychic is going to be enough to take this thing out because I pretty sure it's like an offensive it's definitely got a lot of speed investment so it's not going to be all sort of um d well it's not going to have any defensive investment it might have hp investment but i don't know it goes down so um i think after the poison and the leftovers i'm going to be down uh, to the range where a draco meteor uh from life or kingdra is definitely going to hit um i was very much expecting him to click surf here because i uh, i think surf would have killed in the rain um, but when I saw Draco, I had a glimmer of hope, thinking, this is my chance, please miss, and he doesn't. If he'd have missed that, uh, I'm pretty sure Psychic would have killed. If not, Psychic would have brought him down to the range where a Life Orb or two Life Orb hits would have uh, killed this thing off. Um, so that's really annoying. Now, the, we're going to go back to uh, sort of thinking about the Tapu Koko play I made earlier, where I roared it out. Um, he's at minus two, so if he even does have hidden power grass, it's not going to be killing me. Uh, I can toxic or I can earth power and just da damage this thing as much as possible. The fact that he had this Tapu Coco left as fodder is really annoying. Um, if I'd have killed this thing outright at the time, he wouldn't have had the switch. He'd have had to switch in his Mamo Swine, and uh, I could have potentially scored at it or, you know, earth powered and probably killed it after Stealth Rocks. So, really frustrating the fact that I didn't kill that Tapu Coco. Um, it would have potentially given me a glimmer of hope um, because now we do see the Mammoth Swine again. Uh, it can't kill me. I can definitely kill this thing uh, with a Scald in the rain. Even without the rain, I'd kill it with Scald. Um, I do switch out. Uh, hindsight doesn't really matter, but you know it's a bit silly of me to do that because I will be taking a slight bit more Stealth Rock damage. Bring in the Steelix knowing I can take an Earthquake. Um, the Steelix is pretty much useless at this point because if I let Gastron go down, uh, I can take an earthquake from this thing, sure, but I can't, like, kill it, I don't think, with Heavy Slam. And uh, it's going to die to Kingdra anyway, so I'm going to sack this thing off. Just try and stall out rain. Uh, not that it really matters at this point, really. Uh, but he goes for another earthquake and does kill off the Steelix. So it's now a Poison Gastrodon at about three quarters health after Stealth Rocks versus the world. Gastrodon, uh, sorry, Mammoth One doesn't even need to be Scarfed to outspeed my Gastrodon. Um, just to get an earthquake off of me and it's going to do a lot of damage to me definitely enough to the point where um anything like hidden power grass or a draco will kill me my literal only way of winning uh, at this point uh, after killing this mouse wind is hoping that ruby goes for draco misses and i get a crit uh earth power even then i might not even kill it um so it's really frustrating that i didn't kill that tapu coco off earlier and it's really frustrating that my Kartana died when it did because I still had the team around or things you know that I could have sacked off to stall the rain kill that Pelipper as soon as possible um, and Kartana could have cleaned up but I have hats off to Ruby his prep with the Ferroform is literally perfect um, I think he's I can't remember if he said he had it just in case I bought substitute Kartana 
um, which in hindsight would have been quite good. Uh, I can't deny that, but you know, the Scarf Cartana was too sort of, you know, too good to say no at this in sort of team prep stage. It was too good to say no. So, uh, really good game, Ruby. Um, I'm not too disheartened to be honest because I felt like the team matchup was definitely in his favour. Plus, all of the losses I've had this season um, have been incredibly close other than week one. Uh, week one I'd have been rusty, but I lost 1-0 to Kelly, lost 1-0 to Shardy, and I lost 1-0 here to Ruby. So, three of the four losses I've had this season are 1-0s. Um, and I'm definitely getting lots of kills. It's just that maybe this team doesn't quite have the bulk, which I'd have liked. Now, I was trying to figure out a transfer I could make. Um, I decided not to in the end. And uh, week eight, uh, you can't make transfers in the PPL after week seven, just to like stop you from just literally making transfers to counter team at the end of the season. Um, so the team I have got, uh, or the draft I've got, is what I'm stuck with for now. Um, I feel like we've got the Mons to definitely be able to stay up this season. Uh, we are sort of looming over the relegation zone again uh, at this point. But again, like I said at the start of the video, teams are really close. So there's there's lots of things uh, that could happen still. So guys, make sure you check out the PPL links below as well as Ruby's YouTube and Twitter. Um, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you next week for week uh, eight of the Pokemon Premier League against uh, Baby Eric. See you guys later.